You know, you have to be careful with who you let plug in. How does this connection between emotion and the sense of touch form? Bruce Rosenblum, a professor of physics at the University of California, says that if we so much as shake hands with a person, we are forever entangled with them. This has to do with the idea of non-locality. Non-locality states that we are all interconnected by a field of energy and intelligence. We don't necessarily need to do something to another person or thing to initiate this connection. It happens when once an atom is in the presence of another atom, they can forever influence one another after. This is one explanation for seemingly crazy coincidences, or why when we think of someone from our past, they happen to call on our phone. To those who prize logic and reasoning above all else, this might seem paranormal or impossible. Science, after all, deals with simple cause and effect. But in this case, there is much, much more at play. Dr. Jacobo Grinberg Zilberbaum, a Mexican neurophysiologist and psychologist who studied, among other several disciplines, shamanism and telepathy, conducted a study on two subjects with the hopes of proving that energy transfer between two individuals is real. Before starting the experiment, he allowed the two subjects to interact with each other for about 20 minutes. He then isolated them in two separate rooms and hooked them to electroencephalographs. Subject A was exposed to a series of strokes strobe lights in one room, while subject B was in a dark room with no sound or light stimuli. Dr. Grinberg conducted the same experiment with two other people, except this time he didn't allow a moment's interaction between them before starting his experiment. The results were astounding. The brainwave patterns of test subject B reflected the same brain activity of subject A, who had just watched the series of lights in real life, while the subjects that didn't interact beforehand had completely distinct distinct brainwave patterns from each other. The end of the paper outlining this study reads as follows. Another possible explanation is that when two subjects are able to establish direct communication, both their brains form a unique system such that when one part of the system is affected, the whole system responds. But whatever explanation of the transferred potential might be, the fact is that it is a real occurrence as our results indicate. The human brain is interconnected with other brains with which it has established deep, strong communication. It is perhaps the reason why some cultures avoid shaking hands or hugging. The resulting energy transfer between the two people can have a lasting impact on the other, especially if there is any transfer of negative energies or memories. Now, the nature of the body is such that anything that you touch with a certain level of involvement will naturally absorb that memory. Called runa nabanda in Indian culture, this is an energy you can pick up when you come into close physical contact with someone, but it is most impactful in deep, meaningful relationships that have lasted a long time. If, for instance, your father played with round objects as a child, pebbles, marbles, and things like that, without knowing why, you may tend to play with round objects as well, simply because he developed a certain level of involvement with these objects, and with the time you spent in his presence, you picked up on his tendencies too. So there is memory. Wherever you sit, stand, whatever you touch, there is memory and transaction. Runa Nabanda is the physical memory that you carry within you. It can be acquired through blood relationships or sexual relationships. It certainly isn't the same thing as inheriting genetic factors like eye color or nose shape. It's the memory of where you came from. If you so much as hold someone's hand, you develop runa nabanda. This is why in India, people do not greet each other with handshakes or hugs. They greet you with folded hands and say namaste, which means bowing to you. Indians do not wish to pass on theirs or acquire your runa nabanda unless you are meant to intimately know each other, be it a parent-child relationship or a romantic relationship. Now, if you try to shake their hands, they'll do, do like this because they don't want to get runanubandha with you. The same applies for passing on substances like salt, soil, or sesame seeds. People do not directly take these substances from each other's hands, but rather place the object on a table for someone to pick up, all to avoid runanabandha. Because there are certain materials which transmit memory much better than others. Salt, sesame seeds, lemons, like this if you give Traditional people, they'll say, keep it there, I will take it. Because they don't want to develop runanabandha with you. 
The body remembers any and all kinds of intimacy, not only with other bodies, but with other substances too. If, for example, a yogi wishes to choose somewhere to sit, he will walk up and down and essentially survey the area. He will look around, get a feel of different places, and finally settle in one particular place, which he will go back to every time he visits the area. This is the area they are sensitive to, and it's the most suitable for them. You may not be a yogi, but you likely have a similar practice. When you pick a place to sit on the first day of class, it is an unsaid rule that it is now your seat. You will sit there every day for the semester, and when someone else takes that seat, it may make you feel uncomfortable, to say the least. You may have a favorite booth in a restaurant, or a certain seat in the living room. You will only be conscious of this in yourself if you are in tune with your own mind and system. If you are someone that frequently travels and can't find an attachment to a place, this may not apply so strongly to you. Maintaining Runa Nabanda in such cases may not be easy. But generally, for a very long time, people settled and did not move from their homes for generations. It is how we have ancestral homes, where the people in them feel bound to the space. Today, however, in this fast-paced, job-centric lifestyle, we come across many people and objects every single day. And in the process, we absorb their energy. The idea is to keep the integrity of your body's memory in such a way that it doesn't become vulnerable to other things, that you become a very integrated life. If you want to nurture yourself to be a certain possibility, then you have to maintain the memory integrity. It is more important than ever to be conscious of not developing too much Runanabanda, to not develop too many attachments that take away our own peace and joy. You can observe people, they will have pleasure, they will giggle all the time, but you look at them, there is no joy in them, there's no ease. Because the ease will go away with excessive memory. As the world seeks liberation in all aspects, this awareness of energy transfer among human beings is more an awakening than an encouragement to build walls around us. You must interact only with people and substances that will not pass on difficult memories to you. So the next logical question is, is there a way to get rid of the negative energies already surrounding you? How does one wash off Runa Nabanda? There are many festivals like Pongal, or bogey that are centered around the idea of clearing mental baggage, emotional baggage, and your runa nabanda. Sadhguru's own foundation, the Isha Foundation, conducts the Klesha Nashana Kriya, which is a fire wash, a way of burning up the physical memories you have picked up over time, not necessarily through your relationships. This fire wash, we call it Klesha Nashana Kriya. That means a, a, an act which will take away the impurities that gather around you. Because your body is not just here, your body doesn't stop here, it extends itself. A fire wash is meant to cleanse you in a way that water showers perhaps cannot. For some, it takes a single fire wash to rid themselves of runa nabanda, while for others, it may take five or six. This is why preserving your energy is of the utmost importance. Your body can carry the memories of others, and depending on those memories, it can sometimes be a burden to you. The guilt and confusion you carry after a certain interaction may not just be psychological. It may very well be the physical memory someone has passed on to you, albeit unknowingly. If you enjoyed this video, please check out more like it on the Be Inspired channel. And don't forget to subscribe for more educational and motivational content. Thanks for watching.